I think that today, um, and maybe for the next eight to 10 years, we are going to see Africa uh, adding more jobs. Uh, about 122 million jobs are going to be added by 2020. Uh, and that's, I think, in, uh, a development that we should put uh, into perspective as we design the, the next phase of the sustainable development goals. By 2035 or so, we are likely to see at least 40% uh, of education in terms of access for Africans. So you'd really have a, a more educated Africa than you have today. So basically what I'm saying is that Africa uh, is currently in a very uh, good position to really master development and, and, and own some of these interventions without necessarily relying uh, on the outside. In fact, some of the surveys that have been done on the public uh, sector as well as the business sector to ask what are the challenges that are confronting the private sector. Uh, one of the things that comes up mainly is not so much the question of skills or education, but it's the question of instability, uh, access to finance, and the macroeconomic frameworks. And I think that's something that as we build this uh, new stage, we should pay attention to. A lot of the rating agencies are putting Africa in a positive limelight, and projections are that this is the fastest growing economy uh, this is the place to, to invest in and so forth and so on. So there are all these positive elements. But despite these positive projections, I think that governance, as we said earlier on in the morning, uh, remains one of the biggest challenges facing Africa. And it is therefore inconceivable how MTGs would have been uh, achieved fully uh, with all these governance challenges. And this, uh, I think the question still remains that if we don't attend to the governance challenges, even beyond 2015, we are still going to face a situation where some of the gains are going to be reversed. I, I try to dramatize this as, 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 uh, by saying that it's like steering a boat or a ship with a big wall underneath. It really doesn't matter how effective those steering the boat are. As long as that hall is not closed, we are going to sink at some point. And, and the issue that I'm trying to put across here is that as long as we don't address governance uh, challenges, it doesn't really matter how our targets are set, how effective we are in terms of implementing them, we are still going to uh, lose the gains that we have achieved. So one of the things that we have paid attention to as Trust Africa is, is really to look at the relationship between governance, um, uh, African resources, and equitable development. And I think that the question of equity participation and inclusion has come up several times. And I think that's what we have dedicated ourselves and, and, and some of our partners to really trying to emphasize this point around uh, governance. And in here, by governance, we're really not talking just about political governance. It's broader than political governance to include economic governance. Where there's a semblance of good and strong good governance institutions, we have seen that the result has been the good and eff effective utilization of African resources. And that leads mo most of the times to some semblance of uh, social justice outcomes or equity. But in situations where there are very weak uh, institutions and bad governance, what we see is actually the bad utilization of resources. If, if development is not governed, you actually see populations uh, getting to the streets and, 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 and really demanding that development be governed. If the governance regimes don't improve radically, uh, that hole which I talked about is still going to sink the process. Uh, and I think that what needs to be done, uh, we really need to have a radical narrative on African development. I think one that appropriately identifies what the root cause of Africa's problems uh, are, and the one that identifies what the challenges of, of, of Africa are. So the question really is, why is Africa poor? How do we understand development in Africa? Part of the challenge with the MDGs as they are currently crafted is that they force us to look at uh, symptoms as opposed to the root causes. They force us to look at vehicles and tools that will help us to achieve equity. But that's not really the root cause of the problem. So poverty is not the root cause of the problem. Underdevelopment is not the root cause of the problem. Africa is rich below and poor above. Why is that? We need a narrative that is going to unpack that and clarify uh, that. So in, in other words, we also need a narrative uh, that is going to enhance the productive capacity of Africa's economies. Uh, if we get to a point where uh, our economies can transform the lives of our people, 
that will in a way also address questions of job creation it will address questions of unemployment it will address questions of poverty i think that we and until and unless we get to that narrative we will not be able to address some of the key governance challenges finally let me just identify some of the key governance cha challenges that i think as we do the MDGs, we need to uh, think about. But one of the issues that we really need to pay attention to is economic governance. And economic governance here really used broadly to include natural resource governance, building institutions that are going to be playing in this field. Uh, it, it's also to talk about the legal framework, the institutional framework, and the policy framework. How do African resources play at the level of the international system? So we need to understand the role that resources play in economic diplomacy. One of the potential conflicts we are going to have and we have not talked about here is the, is the conflict around commodities um, and the issue of climate change. And here, I think for me, is the decade of uh, technology and biology and how those intersect and relate to questions of climate change.